Hi, my name is Shauna Kistano and welcome back to another video. This is an empty mattress because my freaking cat peed on my comforter. So now I'm just washing all my blankets just to be safe. Anyways, in today's video I'm going to be talking about my misophonia. This may make me cry and if I do I will get up and take a break from filming and come back because you know, like, some YouTubers, like, they cry and they look fine, but me, I cry and then I get all snotty and disgusting. But anyways, today I'm going to be talking about my misophonia, I'm going to be giving a lot of details about it, but unfortunately I can't list off every single one of my misophonia trigger noises because sometimes they revolve around certain people. So let's get into this. Misophonia, in case you don't know, is basically this medical condition where you get a reaction to certain noises. I feel like the most common one is eating food, particularly like crunchy food or fruits that are crunchy. I know that Kelly Ripa, who is married to Mark Consuelos from Riverdale, I know that she has misophonia and she can't stand to be near him when he's eating a peach. The emotional reactions that you can get from the misophonia noises are things like anger, depression, anxiety, and triggering the fight and flight response. For me, most of the time it is anger and depression, but mostly depression. There is sometimes also a physical pain component for misophonia, and that is where the issue comes in for me. Some people have misophonia and can just hear noise and be nonstop annoyed by it, but for me, the cycle that happens is I hear noise. The noise hurts my ears. To describe what the pain feels like, it feels like either my ears are bleeding because they hurt so badly, or it feels like there are knives that are being sliced into my ear canal and slicing my ear open until they're bloody. But they're obviously not bloody, they're like fine. But just that's the physical pain that I'm getting. The pain makes me depressed. And it doesn't make me suicidal depressed, but it does make me like sobbing, hating myself, feeling like I'm a failure, depressed. And then also occasionally I do get the anxiety part. I'm angry a lot from it too, so sometimes I can come across as irritable or not fun to be around because of my reaction to the misophonia noises. But this isn't something I can control. The reason why I've delayed talking about misophonia so long, even though I need to talk about it, is because I'm ashamed and embarrassed of having misophonia, and I don't want other misophonia patients to feel ashamed and embarrassed about having misophonia. But the thing is, a lot of people don't understand misophonia, so they'll like, say comments like, oh, you're making it so hard on your family, or oh, well, are you thinking about how you're hurting other people with your reactions? Or why don't you just deal with the noise? People say those invalidating comments from a lack of understanding about misophonia and it makes me have a lot of issues with self-hatred and embarrassment when it comes to this condition. So if you encounter anyone with misophonia, or if you talk to someone like me who has misophonia, just don't use those type of language that in any way says that it's the person's fault or that tries to get them to see how they're affecting other people. Because misophonia is a condition that we can't control our reactions. It just is what it is. And yes, it really sucks. And if you just have the, oh, that sounds annoying part of misophonia and you don't have the other parts of misophonia, then maybe you can control your reactions a little bit. But for other people, we can't control our reactions. I was wondering whether I should make this video later and I may make a follow-up video for this because I do want to do a day in the life video to lead you through my day to see what it actually looks like because misophonia has been affecting every element of my life. It's really hard to do schoolwork, it's really hard to read, it's really hard to film videos when I hear noises and I can't watch TV shows and it's really hard to be around people during meal times. So I sort of want to give more insight into what it looks like in my life. So I'll probably do it later, but then I also need to do a follow-up video when I figure out how to treat this. Because currently, I haven't figured out how to treat it. The only advice I have for someone with misophonia is listen to all the different color noises. There's like brown noise, pink noise, yellow noise, white noise. Listen to all the different kinds and find one that feels soothing to you. If none of them feel soothing to you, listen to the deep versions of it. I personally like deep brown noise the best and I just turn on like a 12 hour long video of it and I pop in AirPods. Yes, AirPods, I know that they're expensive, but do not use things like Beats headphones. Beats headphones do not block out noise well at all. I also have these, I just smacked myself in the face. I also have these which are Bose headphones. These are extremely expensive too. They do block out noise decently well, but there isn't any like completely noise blocking headphones. 
And the thing too, why I like the AirPods better is because with headphones like this, there's a strap on your head and it can sometimes really hurt your head and give it a headache. So the only advice I have is wear AirPods and listen to the different kinds of noises as long as you can tolerate them. And I recommend deep brown noise since that's the one that I can handle the best. However, that being said, I found out recently that the reason why deep brown noise doesn't block out all noises is because you're basically looking for a sound that's the same frequency as the sound that you're hearing and the deep brown noise there are some sounds that are the same frequency that I have issues with so it can block out those ones but it can't block out higher frequency noises. Unfortunately there isn't really like medication or anything as far as I'm aware of. I am going to try the Botox in the ear potentially soon to see if that will help. There is like an earpiece that they like get molded to your ear but it doesn't block out noise completely and it's basically the same thing as the airpods except for more expensive. There's also some types of therapies but the type of therapy that I learned about I don't think is a good fit for me and I don't want to make it seem like if you have misophonia you have no hope to get better but I have a very severe case and with the severity that I have I have a hard time feeling hope to get better, but I haven't explored all my options yet. I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna see an ear specialist soon. So hopefully that helps me. So for my misophonia trigger noises, I'm just gonna list off some of them. Again, I'm not gonna be listing off ones that are specific to certain people, but I'm just gonna give you a general sense of what it is. Also, I said that I can't watch shows while these like noises are going on. And if there's a noise in the show, I also have a hard time watching it. And I get the same emotional reaction and pain to the noises in TV shows and movies. One of my trigger noises is train noises. I live in the Pacific Northwest, so there's tons and tons of trains here, which unfortunately means that I have to hear them a lot. I moved from one city to a different city that's a little farther away from the train, so I only hear a train like once or twice every week, but still I get pain and then I get depressed. The noises of fans are another trigger noise for me. The like humming and the machine, I can hear a lot of electrical and machine noises that other people can just tune out or not hear. So fans are a big no for me, which is unfortunate because I live in an apartment with no AC and so the people above and below me have their fans on non-stop causing me pain that keeps me up all night long. Like a couple nights ago I only got three hours of sleep. And also it's unfortunate because I can't turn on my fan to cool down, so basically if I want to cool down I just take an ice cube and rub it all over my body and I feel bad for my cats but I just can't turn on the fan. Another trigger noise for me is eating. Eating originally started out with only one person and branched off to two people and now I have a hard time hearing anybody eat. This one is a major problem for TV shows and YouTube videos. I know that a lot of people like to listen to mukbangs and find eating calming, but it is not for me. It causes me pain and then it causes me to get depressed. Another trigger noise for me is the sound of sniffing. Now every once in a while with certain people the sound isn't that bad but for a lot of people it is bad. I recently watched Twilight and it was a really good movie and I'm obsessed with it but it's a little hard to watch it because there's a scene where Bella is like sniffing and she's not sniffing and like it was meant to be on purpose but it seemed like the actress had a cold when she was filming that scene and so she sniffed like three or four times in that scene and that caused me to have pain. Another noise is the hum of refrigerators and the noise that a dishwasher makes. As you can imagine, these are really hard because you have to have a refrigerator to keep all your food cold and you have to run your dishwasher so you have dishes. Things like power washing a deck and doing loud machinery on cars is also another trigger noise for me. That's a little better living here in an apartment than living in a house where my neighbors would do that all the time, but it's not great. I also have issues with lawnmowers, but sometimes I'm fine with lawnmowers. I can't control my reactions, so I never know how I'm going to react when I hear lawnmowers. Those are all the triggers that I'm going to talk about right now. And I know I recently-ish made a video about POTS, and I know that it's like, wow, you have another condition, but it's like, I have a ton of medical conditions because I hate how when you get one medical condition, then all of a sudden you get a ton of other ones. It's nothing that I can control, it just sucks, and yeah. I will be talking about my other medical conditions in the future but this video is just about misophonia. I really hope that this video gave you some insight into what me and other people with misophonia are suffering from. It's not a fun condition at all, and it is one that is sometimes really hard to deal with. I have looked on Twitter, and I wanna address two things that I've seen. Well, three things that I've seen. 
apparently there was a TV show and there's a lot of TV shows where it's like detectives or cops and apparently recently there was a TV show that got the information falsely about misophonia and portrayed a villain as if the sounds triggered a violent reaction and well there is sometimes a violent reaction that misophonia triggers with but it's not okay or acceptable to take misophonia which is a condition that isn't known about and is misunderstood and to put it on a villain like that's not okay i just got interrupted from a phone call but what i was saying is that we have a really bad stigma about mental illness and disabilities already in our world and we need to stop putting mental illnesses onto villains and making that their whole personality or making that the reason behind why they're acting the way that they're acting. When I was first diagnosed with depression and anxiety and OCD and when I first started having flashbacks, the stigma of mental illness and disability really impacted me and I felt like I was flawed and imperfect and like I could never be a human that people would care about. So we need to get rid of the stigma so that people who are in my situation can feel love and can feel like they're valid and can feel like they can still be a good person even if they have a disability. The other thing I saw on Twitter that I want to address is I saw someone post about what misophonia is and then another person responded with, isn't that basically autism? Misophonia is a completely separate condition from autism. I know for autism, sometimes there are reactions to noises, but from what I understand of autism, they are definitely not the same thing at all. And saying that misophonia is autism is something that needs to stop because it's just gonna spread out misinformation. Even if you're just saying like, oh, it sounds like it, don't do that. Don't compare two disabilities or medical conditions together because what you could do is you could accidentally cause misconceptions about them if some people get two medical conditions like wound together in their brain. The third thing I saw is that someone on Twitter posted about being suicidal for misophonia and I wanted to address this. Yes, misophonia noises can sometimes make you suicidal and that is why we need more treatment options and we need more research on misophonia. We need to find more ways that people like me and people with misophonia can stop suffering. Someone should not have to lose their life because there's something going on wrong in their brain or their ears that causes them pain and depression from certain noises. It's sad and it's frustrating and I wish that I had more hopeful messages of how you can get better with misophonia, but I don't. I truly believe that we need to do more research on misophonia and find better treatment options because options that have been presented to me are ones that do not help at all. If I ever become rich and a celebrity, which I don't think I ever will, I want to do more research on misophonia and POTS and I want to find better treatment options for them. and. I mean, I'm not like a scientist, so I couldn't come up with that, but I could fund possibly groups that are researching different treatment options or management options for these conditions. I want to do something good in the world. Let's be honest, it's probably not ever gonna happen, but if that 0.1% chance of me becoming rich ever happens, I'm gonna be spending my time donating my money and putting my resources into finding more treatments for misophonia and POTS. That's all for today's video. If you found this video insightful or helpful, please give this video a big ol' thumbs up. If you have any questions about misophonia, feel free to comment them down in the comment section below. If you have a specific question, whether it be about your own life or about anything related to misophonia in my life that you don't think is appropriate to have that conversation on a public forum, then feel free to message me on my Twitter or Instagram account and I'll be happy to get back to you about it. I feel like there just isn't enough information about misophonia out there and if I can raise awareness or answer any questions about misophonia that anyone has, I would be happy to do that. I hope all of you have a great weekend and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye!